and we'll continue. So I'll go just straight uh, into the word. Um, as you know, we have been talking about the evangelism series. Uh, we are in the evangelism series in the past two, tan- past, past two Sundays. We have talked about that. Uh, if I may just recall the past messages, we have talked about the evangelism uh, series. Um, the first message, I don't know if anyone remembers what the first message was. The first scatter the gospel seeds. The Bible says, you know, um, in that actually, in the scatter the gospel seeds, um, we talked about making the most of every opportunity. You know, that's what Pastor Peter was uh, teaching us, making the most of every opportunity because we live in very, very evil days. So we have to take advantage of every opportunity. When we need to sow a seed, when we need to sow a seed early in the morning, we do so because sometimes we may not get presented that opportunity. So that was the first message. The second message that Pastor Pastor Peter uh, preached last week was enduring the world's hatred of Christ. You know, he, he told us that we will not be popular. You know, as we start being, as we start evangelizing, we will not be popular in, um, you know, in what we do. We will not be popular, you know, uh, expect resistance, basically. Expect resistance that you will not have the that um, to, you know, you will not have popularity, basically. Evangelism, you're supposed to expect some resistance. So the third message in this uh, uh, we are continuing on is, um, I have titled this, seeing yourself as an ambassador you know you are an ambassador so tell your neighbor or tell you actually tell yourself that i am an ambassador i am an ambassador amen amen so the bible says in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 uh, if i may read that the bible says therefore if anyone is in christ the new creation has come the old has gone the new is here all that all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that God who was reconciling the God that was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and not counting the people sin against them and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation so Paul is setting a uh, he is setting a preface and then he's saying we are therefore Christ ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. Amen? Amen. I am very excited about this message. Even as I was preparing it, I was really getting excited that we are Christ ambassadors. Today, I'm going to talk about the five P's of an ambassador. You know, there are five P's, five virtues, or five characteristics, five attributes, or the five P's of an ambassador. Amen. Amen. So, as we go through evangelism, as we start evangelizing, as we start going out to make an impact, we have to see ourselves as ambassadors. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible says that be transformed by the renewing of our minds. You know, so maybe some of you may be thinking, I am just a nurse somewhere, or I am just somebody who works somewhere. I am just an accountant. I am just a doctor here. You are not just that. You are an ambassador on a mission to represent Christ. Hallelujah. So I was going through my research and I was reading the definition of an ambassador. What is an ambassador? An ambassador is an accredited diplomat, right? Appointed. So an ambassador is appointed. He's an accredited diplomat appointed by the leader of the government. Now, the leader of the government, depending on each country, you could be a president, you could be a king, you could be a prime minister, but the ambassador is appointed by the leader of the government and sent to a foreign country as a permanent representative to promote the interest of that country to where the ambassador is sent. So you are sent somewhere to represent your homestead. So in just, the, I'm talking about the real world, you know, the ambassador of uh, UK to France, you know, he is being sent there to present UK's interest uh, to France. Hallelujah. So an ambassador may present, you know, new business opportunities. He may maybe go to a different country to seek imports, exports. It could be many things that he sits, that he goes and seeks. Amen. Amen. So that is the role. So you are an ambassador. Now, the Bible says <laughs> we are in this world, but we are not 
you know, we are not from it, right? So we live, you know, we may be from here, but we have, you know, we come from a different place. So we're going to talk about the five P's. That's what I've noted. I have, um, I have divided this. Uh, the five P's of an ambassador. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. The five P's of an ambassador. I'm going to just one second. If uh, somebody can help me with my phone that I left over there, that would be good. Amen. God is good. So the five P's of an ambassador. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me just, I'm having a technical issues with my notes. Okay, thank you very much. I think I have, I have it. So the five P's of an ambassador. I put the first P as prayer. You know, you are an ambassador. You are being sent to go represent Christ in the location that he has given you. So one, the first P I put is prayer. Now, to understand prayer really well, uh, we need to go back to the Lord's Prayer. You know, Jesus one day was with the disciples and the disciples were asking, uh, what is, teach us how to pray. The disciples asked, Master, can you teach us how to pray? Jesus said, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right? So there is a will that's in heaven that, that God intends to do. Amen? Amen. So let's go to Philippians chapter 3, verse um, 20. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. The Bible says, Our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a savior, a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. So to understand prayer really well, you need to know who you are. Right, that you remember, I talked about that an ambassador is sent in a foreign country. So the Bible says clearly that your citizenship is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Your citizens, your citizenship is in heaven. So you may be walking on earth, but your spiritual passport is a heavenly passport. Right? So now to understand what unlocks prayer is, you need to know that position, that you are a citizen of heaven. That's why when the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray, Jesus said, pray like this, let your will be done where? On earth, as it is in heaven. So basically as an ambassador, you have been sent to earth, right? And there is a will that's in heaven that we need to pray and ask that that will can be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that's the first P of an ambassador. We need to pray that the will of God that is in heaven can be done. There are so many things right now that we are that are happening in this world where just the will of God is not happening because as ambassadors, what we have been called to do is to pray that the will of God can happen on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? And you can even take it to your personal life. You know, are you praying for the will of God to happen for your children? You know, there is a will. You know, no one is born by accident. No one is born by mistake. You know, there is a will that God has planned for you, for your spouse, for your wife, for your children. You know, and it's our role as ambassador to pray that that will that's in heaven. I see, you know, I I can see it, you know, uh, just visually, you know, where maybe there's in, in heaven computer system. If you open a folder for Sylvain, there could be subfolders in there. There could be a will regarding this, you know, this side. There could be a will for maybe for marriage. You know, there could be a will for a business. There could be like there could be subfolders. And those subfolders, you know, in the heaven's computer system, there are certain that God wants to happen in my life that needs to, I need to make sure they happen here. And I can only do that as through prayer. And as a citizen of heaven, we have that ability to pray. The Bible says that whatever we bound will be bound. Whatever we lose it will be losing. Now, you can take the same thing, expand it to a city, to a geographical location. You know, you pray that the will of God that is in heaven will happen on earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, so citizenship, knowing that you are a citizen of heaven is key to performing your role as an ambassador. Amen. In John chapter 15, verse 19, it says, If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, now Jesus is saying, saying you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. 
So we are walking in this world, but our citizenship is in heaven. I will tell you the same way it speaks the same thing again. John 17, verse 16 to 18. It says Jesus was praying, was praying, you know, for the disciples. He said they are not of the world, even though, even as I'm not of it. Sanctify, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. And you sent me into the world. I have sent them into the world. You know, but, so you need to see yourself as you are not, you don't belong here. Your, citizens, your citizenship is in heaven. And as a citizen, you are praying that the will of God will happen on earth as it is in heaven. I'm really excited about this. You know, um, so a citizen, if you look at it, a citizen has different rights. That's why we need to work with the authority God has given us. You know, when you are an ambassador, you are representative. And a citizenship, a citizen has rights. You know, if I come in this country and I'm not a citizen, I'm not a citizen of the UK. So there are certain rights that I don't have that a UK citizen has. You know, this week there was an example actually. I went to, I had to go to the US Embassy to sort out um, just a little paperwork that I needed to sort out. And it was really cold. It was really cold. So I go there. Um, the moment I got there where the taxi dropped us, there was a line that was so long. I was like, we're going to stay in this line for like two hours. So I stood up in that line. You know, my wife was there with me. So we stood up there and it was so cold. And I was wondering, what are we going to Then after 10, 15 minutes, I was like, this can't be right. You know, I'm a citizen here. Why am I, you know, so anyway, I decided, let me go around the line, just, you know, looking around and see what's going on. So I went and looked around and, oh, lo and behold, there was an entrance for citizens. So, okay, so I tell the security guard, you guys don't tell us, like I've been in the, I said, oh, he said, first of all, show me proof you are a citizen. So I showed him proof then, you know, we went in and we had to do what we had to do. Once we were inside, it was really good. It was not, not cold, there was nice seats, everything. But a citizen has rights. Amen. When you are a citizen, you have rights. So you have, a, you have a citizenship of heaven. You have the passport of heaven. There are certain rights you have. So when you are walking on earth, you are just not walking as anybody. So that's why when you pray, God can confidently tell you that when you bind something, it will be bound. When you loosen something, it will be loosened. Amen? Amen. So you are a citizen of heaven. You know, that is the first P. That is the first P of knowing, you know, of, you know, the first P of an ambassador. You know, a citizen. Citizenship gives you access. You know, that's what, in that example, all he did was just to give me access to another entrance. You know, if I didn't know where that entrance was, I would, you know, if I didn't have documentation that shows me that I'm a citizen, I would have still been in that line in the cold. And I was actually getting worried because I didn't know, I had forgotten my jacket, everything. But because I had access, I was able to, to, to go further. So you have access as a citizen, as a citizen of heaven, through your prayer, you can pray, bind things, you can pray that the will of God can happen on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So that is the first um, point or the first P of understanding what an ambassador is. And one thing by the way of an ambassador, you cannot switch <laughs> citizenship. Can you, can you imagine? Can you imagine the UK ambassador to France, getting to France and now saying, you know what? I've been in France for a long time. Now I can even speak French. I want to become a French. I think that could even become treason. I'm not sure, but that could be a very serious offense. So as an ambassador, you cannot switch your, you cannot switch your allegiance, you know? <laughs> we belong to Jesus, amen, amen. Now, the second P that I want to talk about of an ambassador is position. Hallelujah. Position. Typically, an ambassador operates in an embassy. In my example, I had to go to an embassy. You know, there is a position that God has placed you to be. Or there is a location that God has placed you to be. That, and that location is not by accident. Read with me. If you open up your Bibles, open up your Bibles and go to Acts chapter 17, verse 26. Open up your Bible. Go to Acts chapter 17, verse 26. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. 
And then it says, and he has determined and their pre-appointed times and their boundaries of their dwellings. In my NIV Bible, it says he said the exact times where people will live. So he's talking about your position. You are not here by accident. I think we are talking about it even in the Pastor Peter's first message. Where God has placed you is not by accident. So when you are an ambassador, one of the key thing that God gives you is a position. And we are not going to over spiritualize this. I'm talking about a physical position. So it could be where you work. Your workplace is a position where you are supposed to influence or you are supposed to speak to pray that the will of God happens in that workplace. Amen. That is basically your physical position. And we'll talk, let's read uh, as we go through those points. Let's read uh, Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Verse 3. You know, after Moses had died and, jo uh, and uh, Joshua was taking over, God says something to Joshua in verse 3. He says, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. You know, um, your, your position, you know, that's the position. That's the position of God that, you know, where you place your foot, God is going to give you that, you know. So when you go to your workplace, because your feet are there, you are an ambassador of Christ there in that workplace. Amen. When you go to the grocery store, you know, just your mundane business, you are an ambassador there representing Christ. Hallelujah. When you drive on the road, you are not, you're an ambassador. You're, some of you, you know, or some of us, I haven't gotten a ticket since I've been in this country and I'm very happy. On that but um, some of us you know when you are driving I do you get tickets <laughs> are you being an ambassador eh? when somebody honks at you eh? are you are you tempted to you know are you tempted to <laughs> to honk back at them you know uh, the other day I was uh, dropping uh, you know I was dropping my kids to school and uh, we were late and I was you know I, you know so there was a parking for the disabled so I was like, you know what, we are late. I'm just going to park there. It takes just literally less than one minute to get them out of the car and send them to, you know, where they need to go for school. So I parked in the disabled and my wife gave me a look. You know, there's certain look where she doesn't have to say a word. You know, she gave me a look. I ignored it. I ignored the look. So I took the kids out. I, you know, I saw the principal was outside. The principal came and greeted me. He said, oh, how are you doing? You know, he was just being nice. And then the principal said, by the way, that place you parked was really for the disabled. And we actually have disabled people, you know. And then, you know, I got in the car. And then the look that my wife had given me now became verbal. You know, now she, the look turned to verbal. She said, you know, you're not supposed to park over there. You know, it's disabled. It says clearly why. So. I was not being an ambassador or a representative of Christ in that situation. And I was really convicted. Uh, I was really convicted of that in, um, in that particular time. You know, so even in your mundane business, you are supposed to uh, be ambassadorial because how you carry yourself is you are being an ambassador. You know, how you walk down. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. May God have mercy on us. How you carry yourself, how, how you, you know, when you go on vacation, you are still an ambassador. The Bible says, I'll give out where you place your foot, you'll have that place. People forget that when they're on the vacation, they be. <laughs> you don't lose your citizenship when you go to vacation to Hawaii. You know, when you go to vacation to Spain, are you becoming an ambassador at the beach? Oh, Lord. <laughs> Because there you're also supposed to be an ambassador. On your social media, you are supposed to be an ambassador for Christ. You know, some of you know some of us, we have Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever. I, if I come and go to your profile, are you an ambassador of Christ? Are you representing? Are you, is, is the way, if I look at your profile, your friends, are you really representing? May the Lord's will be done or not as it is in heaven. Are you an ambassador in that sphere? You know, before, you know, how you dress, how you talk to others, you know, hallelujah. So you are an ambassador. Every position that God has given you, you are supposed to be an ambassador because that's where God has placed you. Amen. 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 In, your, in your homes, you know, oh, the Bible says, what does the Bible say? Say, women, honor your men. 
Uh, all, the, all the men are saying amen. You know, I can hear them in their homes, right? So as a woman in your marriage, you're an ambassador for Christ in that marriage. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, I'm hearing only amen from men, right? It's not to us as men, you know? The Bible also tells us, men love your wives just as, as Christ loved the church. Because not to, in that marriage, your role is to be an ambassador, to represent God's will or God's kingdom or God's um, position in that marriage. You are not just a husband or a wife to somebody. You know, you are a representative of Christ in that position he has given you. So there is no position you can overlook. Anything that God has placed you where you live, anything, where you are physically, your location. God has given you that place and he wants you to, uh, to represent him. You know, think about an ambassador represents what, um, what his country has asked him to do. He of an ambassador. I have called it uh, position. Hallelujah. The third P, as I go through this message, um, the third P of an ambassador is protection. Hallelujah. If we continue reading in um, Joshua chapter 1, verse 5, you know, it says, No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. Hallelujah. So when you are an ambassador of Christ, there is protection that you just get because you are doing that. Hallelujah. You know, what am I, now somebody may ask, oh, what if, you know, what if that, you know, Stephen, you know, when Stephen gave the speech to the uh, Sanhedrin, that, that word always gives me, you know, uh, gives me trouble uh, pronouncing. But when Stephen gave the speech, you know, he was stoned and he died. But I say, was God's protection? Yes, God had his protection. The Bible says he looked up before they stoned him. He looked up and he saw a man standing in heaven. You know, so all they were doing stoning him, Stephen was just being welcomed and being recalled. You know, he was, you know, so you have to remember our citizenship is where? In heaven. So, because somebody may say, okay, then nothing's supposed to happen here. No, sometimes things may happen here physically so that we need to get back where? Where our citizenship is, which is even a better place than here. But when you are carrying out the assignment of is a protection you. Amen? Even when that happened after speed, after Stephen has, had given him, him and he died. But there is also many cases where as, as long as you still have a task to do, there is a protection that God is going to give you as you carry out your duties. As you are about to go to evangelism, as we continue this evangelism series, there is a protection God is going to afford you. You know, we go to, um, every other Friday, we go to uh, Striva, you know, where we are in the streets. I mean, we don't call police to tell them or maybe bodyguards to send us. We are literally just, you know, somebody may say we're just going. You know, you can meet all kinds of people there. There are, you know, people, you, you don't know people are carrying, you know. But I know that when I'm there, I'm representing God's will. I'm representing what God has told me to do. There is a protection that God gives me. I mean, you know, in the lion's den, hallelujah. What more protect? In, Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. He slept with the lions in the same place. Amen. And the, there was not even, now, I sometimes I imagine, you know, you read the Bible, and I think, just maybe, I have never seen a lion face to face. You know, even, even going to, I'm not a zoo person, by the way, when you do outings, if you are going to the zoo, don't invite me, I'm not coming. I'm not, I've seen so many things on YouTube where some animals will jump out and do something to the person, so I'm not a zoo person. You know, if you want to go to some, uh, maybe other stuff, I, I, rides, I may come. I'm not going to go to the rides. Basically, I'm not, you know, things like those. Are, but zoo, definitely, I'm over there. So I need to see what if my kids love the zoo, you know. But I can just imagine sleeping there, being surrounded. The fear itself can kill you. Forget about even the lions coming to you. Know, the fear itself can, dis, you know, can just, you know, but the Bible says he was protected during the, in the lion's den. You know, how more dangerous can it get? You know, and then because he was 
he, he was in the he was being an ambassador of Christ, you know, because he has he had refused to bow to idols. There was a protection that God gave him, you know. In the morning, when the king saw it, the king was like, "Daniel, servant of God." I said, "Now I see your God. Your God." I'm paraphrasing. Say, "Now your God is actually real." Say, "Come out." And then the ones who had betrayed him, when they were thrown in there, read the Bibles carefully. The Bible says they did not even hit the ground. In the air, the lions just snatched them. So there is a protection that God gives you when you are an ambassador. We know the story of Shadrach, you know, Meshach and Abednego. You know, they are thrown in the fire. You know, the fire, the Bible says the fire was very consuming. You know, it, it even killed, I think, the people who threw them in the fire. Like it was a very, very serious fire. But those three young men, nothing happened to them. There was a protection that God gave gave them hallelujah so when we are called for evangelism when we are doing what god has told us to do and when we are going in the position in the position god has placed us and we are spreading and encouraging others and doing the will of god there is a protection that god gives you amen i'm really excited about it. I know that my home is protected I know that my property is protected. Why? Because I'm using now. <laughs> I am using it for God's purposes. Now, if you are out of God's will, then anything can happen. Amen. Amen. So are you, you know, so that's why you have to make sure that you know all your everything you have, you are using it for God's will. You know, in um in um in uh I think it's called uh, I know there's people who have studied, what's the word? Uh, diplomatic immunity, you know, for people who have, uh, you know, who, who know this stuff, you know, I think an ambassador, even if an ambassador does something wrong, or even if a diplomat does something wrong in a country, actually they are not, <laughs> they can, the country will say, look, we will deal with him separately, send him to us, you know, he is not tried here, he cannot be here, you know, there is a protection that they say, they say, say, please, I know he has done this, this thing, we, we, we agree it's against the law, but send him to us, we will deal with him. Amen. So there is a protection that God, you know, that God gives because of that. That is actually something that even as the body of Christ, you know, when a brother or brethren does something wrong, don't send him out to the world for the, just you know, bring him to the church, to be corrected there. You know, that's, give him that diplomatic immunity. You know, if you see a brethren doing something wrong, they just say, oh, I saw him in town with X and Y <laughs> and announce it to, you know, go tell everybody. No, give him that diplomatic immunity. Bring him inside the house. Let him be corrected, maybe by pastors, by leaders. You know, give him that. Don't just throw him out there, you know. Hallelujah. So there is a protection. There is a protection that we get when we are evangelizing, when we are walking in what God has called us to do. The fourth P. Uh, as we continue with this is the fourth P that I want to talk about is provision. Hallelujah. Somebody say provision. Pro provision. So when you are walking and being walking in your ambassadorial calling, you know, walking and evangelizing, influencing, scattering the seeds that God has told you to scatter, there is a provision that is given to you. Amen. The Bible says, now we know this scripture, but I want you to look at this scripture. Maybe I'm telling you once I caught the revelation of this, my life changed actually. Matthew 6, chapter 31. It says, so we know this scripture, but let's read it together again. It says, so don't worry about these things. What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we, uh, what shall we wear? I'm reading it from the NLT. The, Jesus says, verse 32, he says, These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father knows already your needs. So, in other words, Jesus is saying, Look, yes, I know you have to pay rent. I know you have to eat. Winter is coming. I know you need heating. So it's not an illegitimate concern. Basically, it's, he knows. The father is saying, I know you need these things already, but I don't want you to worry about these things. Amen. Because your father already knows that you need these things. I mean, I have kids. I don't think my kids worry about, oh, what are we going to eat tonight? 
should I go and ask dad? Because they know a parent will go look for it. You know, even if, even if, you know, even if you had to do it, you will find and do whatever to find something to feed your kids. You know, your, your baby, your child, the ch a baby is not worrying about where is my mother, how is my mother going to breastfeed me this afternoon? Okay, because they know that, you know, when, it's, when the time is there, it will be there. Amen. And then, so Jesus is saying in verse 33, he says, Seek first the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and then he will give you everything you need. In my translation, yes, basically he's saying, Look, you are actually worrying about the wrong thing. You know, I'm perfect. Say, if you are going to. <laughs> uh, in my church in the US, we used to call, we used to have a term called professional warriors. <laughs> You know, there are people who just like to worry. <laughs> so, you know, just like to worry. Now, if you are <laughs> if you're a professional warrior <laughs> and just like to worry, you need something to worry. Because if, you, if everything is going well, maybe you are like, nah, this is not right. I need something to worry about. <laughs> if you need to worry about, worry about seeking the kingdom of God and living righteously. Because when you do that, all else God will do. Your heavenly father knows that you need those things. So when you are carrying out your tasks, when you are carrying out your task of evangelism, God knows you need what you need to do that. You know, I mean, this home here, I mean, this home has become a de facto church. Yesterday, young adults we met here, you know, by the way, if you are, you know, if you are a young adult, you need, we need to see you here. Young adults we met here. So, and sometimes uh, youth, I believe, meets here some of you are hosting the church in your homes so your home has become a place or a position that is executing uh, you know the will of god that is you know so in that home already they provision should not be a concern of yours because as long as you're using your home to do the business of god god's pro, god already it will be there god already knows that you need that actually i would say even instead of praying lord give me rent for next month and say lord help me what do i need to use my home for for evangelism hallelujah it could be maybe the first p of prayer you know you turn your home into a prayer center for your location you know as as long as you are carrying out your evangelism task or your ambassadorial task there is the provision that god is going to give oh my goodness i hope i hope really somebody cut because if you catch this, if you catch this, you actually not even worry about things like, yes, money is a big thing. I'm not minimizing it, but worrying it is a different thing. You know, remember, when God needs resources, he knows how to place resources. Uh, was it Elijah? Elijah was, under, was it Elijah who was under the tree. And then God dropped breakfast for him. Yeah? It was the, what type of bird? The seagull, what type of bird? Hmm? Raven, yeah? The raven dropped breakfast for him. You know, there was nobody around. So God knows how to get resources to you if you are carrying out his task. You know, so there is a P of provision. Now, the problem we have sometimes is God provides and it gets stuck with us. So God may provide a beautiful home like this, you know, and this home now become, you know, your home, your area. Say, I, I, you know, I need my space. You know, I need the space to relax, you know. <laughs> if I want to meet you, we'll meet you at Starbucks, you know. Is that actually that's why I think this what we are doing is actually good. You know, where people are opening up your homes and you know, people are coming. If God gives you this home, it's a home to carry out his task. Because you are a citizen of heaven and he has sent you here to represent him. Amen. So this home is actually also a position. And as you are carrying out this task, he will provide. You know, when he gives you, so basically what this means is every resource God has placed in your hands, it's actually not for you. Hallelujah. You know, um, again, we, I started by saying we are renewing our minds. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the money you have in your bank account is actually not yours. <laughs> Don't send me an email on this, please. And ask, you know, don't send me, but I'm just saying this revelation. The money you have in your bank account is to carry out the, the ambassadorial or the evangelism task God has given you. 
Amen. So you need to use that money to do that. You know, you are just a custodian of that. Now, I am not here just talking. I'm not, I'm not interested or trying to say, okay, maybe, no. I'm just saying whatever God gives you is meant to carry that. You know, if they am, I'm going to use the, the, the ambassador of UK to France. I don't know why I picked that. But, he, he, you know, if they send him money and maybe he needs to do a luncheon of CEOs, French CEOs, he needs to invite them. He needs to buy food. He needs to buy this and this and this. He cannot say, you know what? I need to build a home in Italy. Let me use that money. No, that money is meant to carry out his task. And as long as he's carrying out the task that God has given him, he will provide. Now, the problem is we get whatever God gives us and he gets stuck with us. You know, and when he gets stuck with us, that's why sometimes we cut the provision. You know, but the Bible says God already knows you need these things. So as you carry out my evangelism, as you take position of every place I'm giving you, as you carry out my task, the provision of God is guaranteed. David, that's why David was able to say, I was young, up until the old age. I have never seen I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. He said, never. He has never seen the righteous children begging for bread. That is a powerful thing. You know, when you are righteous, they say, that's what that's what Jesus said, seek first the kingdom and to live righteous, then all these things will be added. You know, so there's the provision. We worry about provision or what's gonna happen. It's a legitimate concern, but God is saying, Don't worry about this thing. Just walk in my will, carry out the task I have given you. As you carry out those, I will provide for you. Amen. Amen. That is powerful. That is powerful. If you don't know anybody, God can still send people. And there's so many testimonies we have heard of this where just God miraculously provides out of nowhere. But because you need to do a task, he will do so. Because you are being, you see, being a representative of somebody is a very powerful thing. When you are representing someone, that means they are basically carrying you. So you need to make sure that they are well presented. You know, I took my kids to a birthday party yesterday. <laughs> you know, uh, my wife had left us and uh, I was getting text messages. This is how you're supposed to dress her. This is what you're supposed to do. The shoes, I have left the shoes. And uh, man, God blessed us. With all these instructions, I even did not dress her properly. <laughs> but because she was interested in how that we are going to represent her over there, there was a list. So we are God's representative. You know, we are, so that's why David's able to say, I have never seen the righteous begging for bread. Amen. Amen. So there is a blessing, there is a provision that we have when we are carrying out God's assignment. Amen. 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 The five, the last P I want to talk about is the P of proponent. Hallelujah. Uh, so a proponent, in other words, I'm going to use a spokesperson. You know, I was trying to come up with the five P's and, uh, you know, and that was one of the one I couldn't find a, a good P, but I, I, I eventually found it. And you English guys, maybe you can give me a better word, but a proponent is basically some like a, a, a spokesperson or a promoter. You know, you are, you know, if I have a, a spokesperson, uh, in the U.S. we have this thing where we, we politically, it's called the daily briefings, where the White House spokesperson comes to give and gives a report of uh, the U.S. government position. So when she's reading that briefing daily, when the journalist asks a question, whatever she responds to is the government position at that time. The journalists don't have to call Joe Biden or don't have to call a minister or a cabinet secretary to ask. When she speaks, she's speaking about the position or the, what the government has sent her to be. So you are a spokesperson for the government. And let's read about that. The best, by the, the best and the greatest example we have of an ambassador was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was the best ambassador. He's the, he's, he's the prototype. He is the prototype of a proper ambassador. And read with me. Let's go to John chapter 12 and you will see. John chapter 12, verse 47 to 50. <clears throat> so I... Uh, John chapter 12, verse 47 to 50. So Jesus is saying, look, I will not judge those 
I will not judge those who hear me, but don't obey me. Now I'm gonna be speaking as I carry, as I basically saying, look, I'm just doing my task. If you don't obey me, hey, say, for I have come to save the world, not to judge it. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. If I may perhaps say, look, I'm just here, I'm carrying out my task. My goal is not to judge, I will just speak. Then verse 49. Now that's why an ambassador is speaking, because he was the greatest ambassador to have ever lived. He says, I don't speak on my own authority. The Father who has sent me has commanded me what to say. And then was the second one. He says, how to say it. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. So Jesus was just a spokesperson for the Father in heaven. In other, there's another verse that says, whatever I hear is what I speak. You know, he's just, you know, a spokesperson. So the White House briefing uh, or, you know, that spokesperson cannot just come and say this morning, you know what, I'm now going to give you, and you know, what, what do I think about X and Y? No, <laughs> there is a briefing that has been prepared. The intelligence agencies have done their research. They have given, you know, maybe the finance, the treasury secretary, have the, the treasury ministry have done their research. They have given her things to report, things to say. So they cannot come and say, oh, I just want to speak my own, my own, what I think, right? So that's why Jesus says, saying, look, the father who has sent me, remember we have been sent, <laughs> we are citizens of heaven. So the Father who has sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. So there is what to say, that's number one, and also how to say it. Because that's, you know, a proponent or a spokesperson needs to know those two things. If you get what to say, but how to say it, you get it wrong. Then you are failing that P there, that P of proponent or that P of spokesperson. So we have to be very careful to get what to say and how to say it. Hallelujah. Because as a spokesperson, you don't, you know, you don't speak your, you don't speak what you want to speak. Amen. Or oh, what if, you know, I have, uh, you know, I have met somebody special, you know, and we want to live together. You know, we will see these are tough times. You know, we want to split the bills. You know, if, I mean, we are going to get married anyway. So what's the big deal? You know, what do you, you know, what do you, what, you know, what do you think about that? I will, I will say, look, that potentially. Now, the, some of you are holy. Maybe you can stay in one bedroom and the other bedroom and nothing happens. But that can lead to fornication. And the Bible is very clear on that. You know, that fornication is not part. <laughs> you know, the, the, those who, for example, do things like that, we know inherit the kingdom of God. So you say what the Bible is telling you to do. So we are called as, as we evangel, as evangelists, as we become ambassadors, seeing yourself as an ambassador, to speak what the Bible says, not your opinion. Now, if you give your opinion, make sure the opinion lies. Now, because it's not grammatically, we're not being here grammatical. You know, if somebody tells you, uh, you know, sister so and so, what, what do you think? You know, you don't have to quote them and say, you know, the Bible says, you know, you can just say, I th-. but if you say, I think, make sure that your, your I think aligns with the Bible. You know what the scriptures say. So you're not giving opinion. You know, that's why, for example, um, a lot of you know things are happening where very controversial subjects, you know, people are asked, hey, minister so and so, pastor so and so, what do you think? And then you find two pastors who said they have citizenship of God, give two different opinions or two different statements. How is that possible? if we are all getting the authority from Jesus Christ. So it means if you are getting multiple, then it means that one of them, or some of them are getting it from maybe their thoughts, or maybe their mind has not been renewed, because the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind has not been renewed, so you're giving your own opinion when you're supposed to be a proponent, when you're supposed to be a spokesperson for, um, for God. You are supposed to be a spokesperson for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, um, yeah, I wanted to just to mention that, you know, those uh, five P's, um, five P's of, you know, being an ambassador, seeing yourself as an ambassador. As we go through this evangelism um, series, is, is that seeing yourself today, see yourself as an ambassador. Know that you have to pray, you know, you are praying for the Lord's will. You know, that's actually purpose. You are praying for the Lord's will that is in heaven to be done on earth. That's the purpose of your, that's what you are praying. Lord, whatever you want to, whatever you have in heaven, 
since I'm representing you, I'm a representative, I want to happen on earth today, you know. And then as you do that, you know, the second, the second P that I want to talk about, your position, talk about, you know, take control of the position God has given you, you know, you will be protected. Then there's provision, then there's proponent. Uh, so God is good. We will continue with this series. You know, I, you know, I, I'm going to put a teaser for you. You know, where the Bible says, Jesus says, I speak not from my own authority. Verse 49. The Father who has commanded me has told me what to say and how to say it. So we need to figure out what to say. You know, and I'm going to put a teaser for you because we are continuing this series. You know, where we are going now, we are going to learn the next series is what, now how do I know what to say and how to say? Because what to say is important. Amen. God is good. So today, start seeing yourself as an ambassador, walk in that ambassadorial anointing. And as you do that, God is going to do great things amongst us. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's just pray. And uh, as we finish this, this prayer, and um, we just pray, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, God is good. You may be watching this morning, and you are watching, you say, I'm not even, you know, maybe even, I'm not even a citizen of heaven yet. You know, by the way, you cannot become an ambassador if you're not a citizen, you know. You have to be a citizen of heaven first for you to become an ambassador. So you may say, I'm not even a citizen of heaven. You know, oh, you may have, <laughs> you may have changed your citizenship or whatever. You know, maybe you are not in the right standing with God at this moment. Wherever you are, I want just you to pray in your heart and just say, Lord, I want to become connected with you again. Amen. Amen. And say, Lord, I want to become connected with you again. Say, Lord, I want to be a citizen of heaven again. I want to reconnect with you. Just say, Lord, just if you are if you are in the sound of my voice and you are hearing me, just say, Lord, may forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me, Lord, where I have not been in position. Forgive me, Lord, where I have not uh, carried your, your, your will. Forgive me, maybe where I have walked in ways I'm not supposed to walk. Help me to do that. And as you connect with God, God is going to enable you to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, for this afternoon, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. Father, we thank you for your grace. You know, we didn't do anything. It's not like we worked hard. You gave us salvation freely by your grace. Lord, we just want to thank you for that. You have made us citizens of heaven. So many benefits we have inherited just because you died for us. So, Father, may you give us grace to know who we are, yes. to walk in the anointing that you have given us, O oh God. As we continue to evangelize, as we continue to impact, we need to impact, as we continue to impact, to walk in the authority that you have given us. Yes. So Lord, I pray that this seed that we have had, that Lord, you continue to even allow us to meditate. Maybe even listen to the message a couple of times, just meditate, pray about it. So that our minds can be renewed, our minds can be transformed in any of this area. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for watching. We enjoy you joining us for the service. Please like, subscribe, and we hope you join us again. God bless you.